The mother in a coffin is called by her little baby. People seem completely stunned and stupefied at the macabre scene because tears, expectation, and amazement to see what that little one was doing filled the atmosphere of that pitiful and sad burial. The little boy began to get so restless in his grandmother's arms that, seeing his desperation, she quickly passed him to his father who immediately felt how the child's body trembled as if he had a fever. Somehow that little angel could perceive what was clearly happening. He felt and saw the pain of everyone in that place. And perhaps he himself felt the same tragedy as all those who witnessed that burial. Harrison watched as his baby turned his whole body toward the casket where his mother's body rested, and in murmurs, the comments of the funeral attendees can be heard. The child, so anxious to seek and feel the companionship of that love as pure and necessary as his mother's, was doing all he could to get Lozer to the casket. I invite you to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to receive the latest videos. Now enjoy the story. Harrison, no longer able to contain the baby, slowly approached the cold, lifeless body of the woman he loved so dearly. He hesitated for a moment at the thought of placing his tiny baby in front of his mother's motionless body, and the closer he got the more restless the child became. But how had all this happened? How is it possible that such a young, robust, and full of life women's was now about to be buried? Everyone present had known the story of those young men. Harrison Snow, millionaire and aristocrat, was the son of the largest landowners in the region and owned thousands of acres of land and hundreds of thousands of head of cattle. His family was the wealthiest ranching family in all of Texas and she, a descendant of Mexican parents, possessed unparalleled beauty. As a child, she had been raised by her grandmother, who had diligently and painstakingly made naughty a woman any man would want to marry. From childhood, these two souls were destined to be together for each other, but the difference in social strata and family roots meant that from the beginning, the relationship was frowned upon and no one thought it would work out. But love is always a stubborn gamble to go against the grain. Harrison's family, to keep him away from that woman who, in their eyes was simple and unattractive, sent the young man abroad to pursue his studies. His parents assured him that in that country he would meet and fall in love with someone else and quickly forget what they considered a youthful infatuation. Time passed and the love remained intact thanks to the incessant written letters that kept coming and going. And soon time passed so quickly that Harrison finished his studies with great astonishment and unlike his parents' expectations, he remained a bachelor and never doubted for a moment what his next destination would be, his hometown. The arrival of the snow heir was an event throughout the region and the young people now of age, capable of making their own decisions, got married and to avoid the uncomfortable disapproval of their parents, decided to move to the capital. There, a few months later, their first child was born, a beautiful boy named Jackson. Soon after, Harrison's parents sought out the couple and apologized to them for not supporting them as they deserved and they also moved to the capital with the intention of being closer and sharing many more beautiful moments with their little grandson and of course accompanying Natty in the child's upbringing. Everything was going on as harmoniously as possible between the young mother, the little boy and her in-laws. Until one day, suddenly, while Nazi was preparing the baby to put him in his crib, she suddenly fainted losing consciousness completely. The young woman was rushed to the hospital. But to no avail the efforts and maneuvers the doctors performed on Natty's body, it surrendered to death. The diagnosis was a sudden and rapid loss of blood pressure, which has caused her fatal outcome. Funeral arrangements were made and there they stood before the pitiful scene. A hard-working, full-of-life father holding his one-and-a-half-year-old son, who grew increasingly agitated as his father slowly approached the coffin of his recently deceased mother. Harrison asked for that coffin lid to be open so that little Jackson could see his mother one last time and as he did so, the little boy jumped with excitement and reached out his soft little hands towards his mother's body. He called out to her in a tender and playful way. Everyone heard that tender sob coming from the innocent little mouth. Harrison, his eyes filled with tears, watched the scene of his little son calling out to his mother. So the man began to remove the baby from his mother's body. Then he noticed a faint, soft moan coming from his wife's body. He moved a little closer, and with great difficulty noticed a faint, very faint breath coming out of his wife's nose. The news spread quickly. 
Naughty had been pronounced dead at the hospital and suddenly, due to the moans and cause of her baby, had returned from the very gates of death. The investigation that was underway at the time made everything completely clear. The woman's in-laws had planned her murder, taking as a pretext to spend time with her grandson and looked for the precise opportunity to slip into her drink powerful sleeping pills that caused her death. Somehow Natty's body had fallen into such a deep sleep that the doctors left her for dead. After some time, and after hearing all the desperate calls from her young son, Natty had regained consciousness, and so the terrible fact of the attempted murder had come to light. If you like Knotts' story, we invite you to like it, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you next time! Please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you.